Okay, for the best interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So good afternoon and welcome everyone to our first ever MNAC Monday uh, college admission Q&A panels. Um, as you can see here today, we have a panel of college admissions experts from a variety of different institutions from the Midwest. So speakers here today represent public, private, two-year, four-year, in-state, and reciprocity colleges and universities. Uh, MNAC was established in 1991 and is a non-competitive, post-secondary, collaborative, dedicated to improving access to higher education for Minnesota students of color. Uh, the Minnesota Association of Counselors of Color works to provide college access opportunities throughout the year. So this includes hosting college fairs, uh, professional development opportunities, and a scholarship for first-year students. Due to the impacts of COVID-19 on the school year last year, and likely the school year coming up, um, it was important for us to find new and creative ways to provide high school students with these opportunities um, within our mission. Therefore, we're excited to bring this presentation to you virtually. Um, so we'll get started with introductions, and I'll ask that all panelists introduce themselves and also the institution they represent. So after those introductions, we'll then jump into the questions. As a participant, uh, we welcome you to chat the questions you have into the Q&A box, and we will do our best to answer those. Um, at the very end, we'll provide all the contact information for the people you, you'll be hearing from today for any future follow-up as you get started. Okay, so first up, Minneapolis Community and Technical College. My name is Cheryl Field, and I work in the admissions office of Minneapolis College in downtown Minneapolis. And then Cheryl, could you uh, talk a little bit about uh, your institution? Yes, um, Minneapolis College offers a high quality and affordable education with award-winning faculty committed to your success. It's a place to find flexible course schedules to fit your needs in a welcoming and supportive campus. Um, we're a two-year school, so you can choose to get a two-year degree, which is 60 credits, a diploma, which would be about 34 to 54 credits, or you can even get a short-term certificate um, about 22 to 29 credits that will prepare you for the re relevant skills to meet the current workforce demands. Um, our courses are most affordable. Our tuition per credit ranges from about $186 per credit to $205 per credit. So for a 30 credits, that cost is approximately 5,600 a year before financial aid. Um, we have resources to help students apply for FAFSA or financial aid, but we also have scholarships through the Minneapolis College Foundation that provide over 600,000 in scholarships per year. Um, to become a student, it's never been easier. You simply apply online. We have a $20 application fee. Um, course placement is determined now by high school grade point average or standardized test scores or previous college work. Um, then you meet ver uh, virtually with an academic advisor that specializes in your field and they help you register for courses. Um, lastly, Minneapolis College, it's one of the most diverse two-year schools in the Minnesota state system, and we care about student success in and outside the classroom. So we have lots of different support services, such as free one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Um, we have a University of Minnesota Boynton Health Clinic that's free for our students. We have an Accessibility Resource Center, Career Services. Uh, we offer individual counseling, food shelf, snack packs, um, and several student clubs and initiatives, such as African American Educational Empowerment Program, our American Indian Success Program, and our Latinos Unidos for College of Higher Achievement programs. Um, so we're a two-year school in downtown Minneapolis, 
that has very affordable tuition and a supportive environment. Thank you. All right, looks like I'm up next. My name is Andrew Wolf, and I am a Twin Cities admission counselor for North Dakota State University. Um, I'm actually filling in today for our multicultural recruitment coordinator. Her name is Heather Keeler. Uh, she just recently had knee surgery, so she's at home resting up. Um, but as far as NDSU goes, we are a Division I four-year university located in Fargo, North Dakota, just across the border from Moorhead. Um, we are a mid-sized campus, so we have just over 13,000 students and the majority of those are undergraduates. Um, Academic-wise, there are over 100 majors that you can choose from, and perhaps later in the panel, we can highlight some of those, um, but probably heard maybe of like engineering and health profession programs through NDSU. On average, we have a 16 to one student to faculty ratio, and 67% of our classes have 40 students or less. So. We really do try, despite our size, to keep students in smaller environments uh, where you can actually engage with each other and engage with your professors, both in and outside of the classroom. Um, speaking of outside of the classroom, though, we also have nearly 300 student organizations that you can get involved with, um, and also 14 D1 athletic teams. So, you know, watching those games along with watching theater and uh, musical performances, all of that is kind of wrapped up in the whole NDSU experience. And like I mentioned before, we are located in the Fargo-Moorhead community, and that's definitely on the rise. I think thriving is a good word. Um, just this year, we've been ranked the hottest job market in the U.S. and the best city to start your career. So good place to come not only for college, but also to get a start in whatever it is that you're planning to study in college. Hello everyone, my name is David Tolles. I'm an admissions counselor at the University of Wisconsin River Falls, focusing on multicultural outreach and transfer advising. Um, some of you may be familiar, but if you're not, um, University of Wisconsin River Falls, UWRF for short, is located in River Falls, Wisconsin, um, about 30 minutes from downtown St. Paul, about 40 from downtown Minneapolis. They call us a small to medium sized campus. We got about 6,000 total students. We always prided ourselves on our excellent teaching, undergraduate research, and preparing our next generation of leaders. There are 70 plus areas of 70 plus areas of study um, spread across our four distinct colleges on campus. Average class size is right around 22, so you get a ton of one-on-one -on -one support from your faculty and staff. Really great ability to know your other peers and classmates, and makes some really great connections with um, your faculty as well. Tons of ways to get involved in clubs and activities. There's a lot of great walking trails directly connected to campus. Easy access to the Kinnickinnick River, which flows to the backside of campus and connects back to um, the St. Croix. Over 150 student clubs and organizations. Again, tons of ways to get involved um, and make those connections when you're on campus. Our application fee has uh, recently been lowered to $25. Um, last year, we gave out $2.4 million in scholarships to all of our students. So really committed to making um, education as affordable as possible. Hello, everyone. My name is Musa Baiga, and I am our Twin City representative for the University of Wisconsin Twins team. Um, I've been in our admissions office for about three plus years, um, immediately after graduating from the Cookson campus in the fall of 2016. Um, uh, the University of Minnesota Crookston is one of the five uh, campuses throughout the University of Minnesota umbrella. Um, we are located in the upper northwest corner of the state, so um, about 70 miles north of NDSU. So uh, I would say the number one question that I get in my role is where are we located? So for those who are familiar with like um, University of North Dakota in Grand Forks or um, NDSU in Fargo, we are also in um, that area. Um, in the Northwest Minnesota. Definitely our campus is going to be on the smaller side of our total enrollments, less than 2000 students. Um, but that's also kind of split between our um, fully online programs that we offer. So realistically on campus enrollments about, you know, 900 students. So that's definitely one of those campuses where you're not gonna get lost um, on campus. And, it's more of that community family style that you would get on campus. So 
I would say for a lot of our alums that come and, come and go through Crookston, that's um, what really attracts them to our campus is knowing that they can get a University of Minnesota education, but at a much, much smaller size. So um, it's definitely one of those campuses that if you're looking for something smaller, you can feel like um, you're a part of, um, of the community. So um, getting into kind of the class sizes are, you know, about 16 to one um, student to faculty ratio that you would see in our classes. So you're really getting to know not only your classmates within your major, but you're getting to that opportunity to build a relationship with your professor too, which could lead to um, potential um, internship opportunities as you're finishing up your, your degree as well as figuring out leads for potential careers once you graduate. So um, definitely something that we are um, happy to have uh, within our um, education or your experience at our campus. Um, like most campuses, we have student groups and organizations that you can get involved with to further um, build connections with your campus community. Um, they're going to range from, you know, major of interest to just hobbies that you're um, interested in wanting to get more involved in. Um, I would say that our most popular student group on our campus is actually our archery, archery club. So if, if that's something that you already have an interest in and take part in or something you want to get involved in, um, it's definitely something that um, a lot of our student community likes to get involved in, but there's also different groups that um, range to what your major is, uh, specifically like our business crew. Um, that's going to be a group that um, our business students are all welcome to join and kind of build a community within not only what your major is, but also kind of just knowing that you're within the same department, you not only get to know students outside of your major, but also faculty too, that you might not um, have the experience to be taught by. So, um, Again, other there, there's there's you know four or so that we offer on our campus, so many different ways that you can get involved in. Um, kind of going back to um, the point of having an online um, opportunity, I know that right now uh, with the, the the current pandemic that we're facing, that is you know a topic of conversation that um, a lot of students and families and counselors are having um, with you know deciding where you're wanting to go to school and. Unfortunately for our campus, we've had an online programming um, for 20 or so years. Um, so it's, it's, it's something that we um, not just instilled, it's something that we've been offering to our students. So um, it's an opportunity to, you know, still um, attend the University of Minnesota Kirkston, um, maybe not necessarily on campus, um, but we offer 16 fully online programs. There wouldn't have to be a reason for you to come on campus. We have a, a staff totally dedicated to ensuring the success uh, within those online programs. Um, pretty much a, 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 mirror, a mirror image of what you would see as an on-campus student as well. Too, so, My name is Alan Meyer. I work in the admission office at Gustavus. Um, we're located about an hour south of Minneapolis-St. Paul. Gustavus is a nationally ranked liberal arts college that was founded back in 1862 and we have about 330 acres of space up on top of a hill overlooking the town of St. Peter, Minnesota, just north of Mankato. Just under 2,300 students attend Gustavus, all of which are, almost all of which are full-time. We have about 72 different majors as you can see from the screen and uh, faculty to student ratio of one to 11 and an average class of 17 students. Um, that means this is a personalized experience. We're also a very residential college, meaning almost 90% of our students live on campus. And that means you really get to know each other and you're a part of a community for four years. In terms of four years, also we have an 80% four-year graduation rate. And that means of the students who start each fall, 80% are graduating in four years or less. Generally having had a international experience of some sort, and at least one internship uh, during their four-year experience. Gustavus offers more than 20 varsity sports at the Division III level. We also are a very fine arts-oriented campus. More than 40% uh, of our students are involved in fine arts during their four years on campus. We don't offer athletic scholarships. NCAA Division III doesn't allow that, but we do offer a lot of fine arts and academic-related scholarships. So I would encourage you to look into those things. 
August 1st is when our application for admission will open up, and that's every year. And we would encourage you to apply for admission. It is free to apply, and it also is non-binding. So no matter when you apply for admission, you have all the way until May 1st in your senior year to see your financial aid, visit campus, visit other campuses, and really get comfortable with your decision um, to attend Gustavus. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Erica Greeley and I work at Northern Michigan University. We are located in Marquette, Michigan, which is in the Upper Peninsula. So we're right on the shore of Lake Superior. Um, a lot of students who come to Northern are looking for the adventure of an academic challenge, but also of experiencing something different that they haven't had where they're coming from. Uh, we have about 7,600 students and over 170 different academic programs to choose from, and that includes four-year bachelor's degrees as well as two-year associate degrees and certificate programs as well. Um, our average lecture cl size class is about 28, and then our seminar or lab class sizes are around 15. So you really do go get those smaller sizes, close relationship with professors, one-on-one -on -one attention. Um, we've been recognized as being a top 15 best public university in the Midwest by US News and World Report. And we also offer the top 10 training programs for um, the top 10 fastest growing jobs in the country as well, such as um, solar installation, um, wind and turbine technicians, things like that. Um, about 96% of recent NMU grads are either employed or are continuing their education. And Northern is recognized as being one of the top two most affordable public four-year universities in our state. So um, there's a lot of financial aid that students are automatically considered for, but also additional opportunities for students to apply for as well. Thank you everyone for your introductions. I am going to take us off the screen share here and we will jump into um, some of the questions that we have for today. Um, so to get started, let's see. Um, let's start with an academic question. How accessible are your professors? And what are some examples of professor-student interactions outside of the classroom? So maybe a couple comments on that. I can start off with that. Um, our professors are extremely accessible. Every class at Gustavus is taught by professors and every um, professor does advising, every single professor. Plus then they have office hours and spend a lot of time on campus as a part of the community. So you get to know professors very well here. If you choose to do that, they're interested in getting to know you and pushing you uh, to work hard, but also be successful. I'll add that we also find a lot of ways for students to get involved in undergraduate research with our professors too. Um, so uh, professors themselves will have research opportunities for students to get involved in, or students will have research they want to conduct, and they'll find a faculty member um, to conduct that with them too. Northern does something very similar where we're encouraging our undergraduate students to get involved in research. Um, students can actually be paired with some a professor starting their first year. So they can actually get started on their research before they get to campus and then conduct research alongside a professor and get a stipend for that, so payment for doing research with a professor as early as their first semester of their first year. Thank you for that. So for students considering your institution, um, how would you advise a student or what support resources are available for those who might be coming in undecided or not really sure what they want to major in, but maybe they have interest in these areas. So are there services that help students explore majors or what can they expect on your campuses? I can start yeah. with from, Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> from Minneapolis College, um, we have one thing called the TRIO Educational Opportunity Center. And it's a place that helps students apply to financial aid and to any college they want. It's a free service but they also do career exploration with the students. Our career services offers a, a really short assessment that's free for anyone on our website at www.minneapolis.edu. Um, so when someone's undecided, we also have exploratory degrees that students can select um, and feel safe that they're not um, losing time or money taking classes that they didn't have to take because they decided to change their major. So we have several different opportunities for them. 
Yeah, I would, I would say for our campus, something that we instilled um, that started last fall is a student success team. So, um, of course, our students all have the, you know, their academic advisor, but we also wanted to build a team that included a professional advisor as well as a community advisor. So for those students that, you know, come in undecided or undeclared on their major, um, they have that professional advisor that allows for them to kind of start thinking about what it takes or the, the types of things to really figure out their interests and decide on a major and encouraging them to, you know, act upon that and, and kind of take courses in different areas to kind of pinpoint exactly what it is that you want to study. Um, we do also incorporate two within their first year, the first year experience. So they'll be taking courses that kind of teach them with resume building, to skill building, networking, things of that nature as well too, to kind of start that process to figure out what to study as well. Thank you for that. Um, could, could you comment on student life at your school and how students could go about finding and building their community? I can start on this one. Um, as I mentioned a bit in the introduction, NDSU has nearly 300 student organizations. And just referring back to my own experience in college, I think that was joining a student group was really what allowed me to meet, you know, people who I had something in common with. And those people that I met through student organizations became the people who are still my friends to this day. So I always tell students, you know, you might see movies or TV shows and everyone is just best friends with their neighbors. And even though that's ideal, and yeah, we hope that happens in the residence halls, it just might not happen. You might not have much in common with the people who happen to live next door to you. So um, maybe that's just kind of answering the question in general. You know, anywhere you go, I would always encourage you to join a student organization or two. Um, but yeah, that would be my two cents on the question. At Northern, I think I think it's a, I think that you're right, Andrew. It's true that at a lot of schools, that's that's a really good place to start. I think too. In addition, at Northern, we do um, block scheduling when students come in their first year, so they are in a cohort with other students. So you have you're taking classes with the same students as you get adjusted. So you can develop study groups and things like that. And then there's a lot I think at a lot of schools to get involved in um, residence hall activities. So um, living on a floor, living in a, as part of a community activities and events to help you really engage in the community and connect with your neighbors and other people to feel comfortable, get to know people, feel at home and feel like you're part of something so that you're successful at the university. Similar to finding community on campus, um, what would a student expect from your residential life? Is living on campus required? Is it for the first year? Um, do students live off campus? Um, what can someone expect? We require on-campus living the first two years and you actually have to apply to live off campus in your junior and senior year. So that's why nearly 90% of our students live on campus uh, for all at any one time. Uh, and we just think that that uh, feeds directly into student involvement, activities, relationship development, um, developing as a person outside the classroom, which in our opinion is just as important as uh, developing in the, inside the classroom too. So we, uh, we actually do not require our freshmen to live on campus if they choose not to their freshman year, but 97% of our freshmen end up living on campus their first year and, and tend to carry over into their sophomore and later years as well too. Um, and as far as the expectation with, with rooming with your roommates, we, we try to line up our, our uh, students with based upon major, at least their department too, so at least they're coming, into, they're coming into it with at least something in common if they're not already rooming with somebody that they already know or who they've met there's, there's coming to Crookston as well too. So we try, to, we try to line them up as best we can with similar interests so that you're not just completely moving in with somebody that is completely opposite from as well. At NDSU, we require first year students to live on campus. And then from there, you are free to roam. Um, you are guaranteed housing as a first year student, but there is still an incentive to apply earlier than later because the earlier you apply for housing, the higher priority you get to pick your residence halls. So there are a few different types. Um, even if you can't get on campus to check those out, you can view 
pictures and kind of like 360 degree um, tours of all of those. I would just quickly add that as a two year school, um, we don't have any um, dorms. So we are considered a commuter school. So students would either live at home or they're gonna live in maybe the uptown area or near the University of Minnesota because we're so accessible with um, transportation. Um, students will just fi find their way onto campus. And when they're majoring in something, there are such small class sizes that they end up building community that way and are um, multiple different student life opportunities too. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a pandemic COVID-19 related question. So during these times and the lasting impacts, how can students engage with your campus in a meaningful way? Are you working with students who want to visit um, or how are you working with students who want more information or want to come visit? Um, at Northern, we're offering a lot of virtual opportunities for students to interact with um, admissions counselors, professors, um, staff, so like financial aid, um, student services, other students on campus. So we have sort of live interactions with virtual tours and things like that, but also a lot of recordings of student panels, um, panels like this that students can access to kind of learn more. Um, so students can go to our website to learn more and set up a virtual visit if they like, uh, which is nmu.edu slash admissions slash virtual. Um, but additionally, we are also offering on-campus tours starting mid-August. So Northern will be face-to-face -face this fall. So for students who can and are comfortable coming to campus, we have some um, a lot of safety precautions in place, but we are offering on-campus um, visits this fall. River Falls, just, we just opened up our on-campus visits starting in July, so you can schedule those online. Um, we do still also offer um, our virtual visit opportunities as well. Similar Northern has opportunities to meet with financial aid, academic advisors, faculty advisors, and um, student involvement, places to get involved on campus as well. Yeah, I will retweet exactly what David and Erica have said. Uh, I just wanted to add to more so for those students that have committed to campus for the fall 20, 2020. We are um, we're holding a series of workshops uh, with our student family experience unit. So those students can still engage with not only themselves, but also just with us on campus as well to make sure that everything is in, everything's in order from when they, they do um, come to campus this fall. So um, just having them do different activities to, uh, make sure that everything's in place and getting to know each other too to continue to build those communities since they won't have um, those opportunities currently to actually come on campus and meet each other and interact in that way. At Gustavus we're open for live visits and have been for about a month. We also offer virtual visits both group and individual. The live visits include personalized individual family tours and then we're going to be open in the fall uh, starting about a week early. At Minneapolis College, the majority of our classes will be held online. Um, we have a certain number of labs and lectures that will be face-to-face -face and on campus um, done in a very safe way um, so it can be sanitized and social distancing and all of that. Um, and as far as virtual admissions, we have admissions um, uh, every week virtually and every day Monday through Thursday students can meet with an, um, an admissions advisor or an academic advisor to discuss um, classes or get help registering or through the application process. Thank you for that. I think everyone's doing the very best that they can to still provide the best experience possible for students. Um, we know this is a really tough time for everyone and um, we want this information to still get out to you and for you to still have a campus experience. Um, this is a question from the chat. So someone said, I know things are different now due to COVID, but what was your favorite place or thing when you were on campus? Something special or unique about your campus? I'll, I'll say for being a small campus for, for us, definitely when a lot of students have the idea of college, they think of this this big place where 
you just can go and, and kind of get lost, you know? I think one unique thing about our campus is that you're gonna know everybody from the faculty to the staff to who our facility management employees are on campus. It's really gonna be that experience where everybody knows everybody. And I think, I think from my experience as a student there, I really appreciated that because it really felt like if I was having issues with like a vehicle, if I needed to go find something, I knew somebody that I could go to. And, and I feel like that's, that's something unique with our campus that those who graduate really, really enjoy that. The, the, the accessibility to be able to get to, get to know their community is gonna be there. I would say that as I do the tours on campus, I miss bringing students to our um, specific labs. Uh, for example, we have the largest nursing lab within five states. Um, we have the largest number of industrial sewing machines for our apparel technologies program. Um, we have great like CNC machinists and HVAC um, areas where they build a basement um, just so that students can have that hands-on experience. Each of these individual places or labs kind of tells the story of the school. So I would say I miss walking around the school and looking at all of the different um, locations on campus. I really love how um, uh, the surrounding environment is a big part of the city of Marquette, but also a part of Northern. So it really is the classroom and the study space for students um, right in the backyard, but also kind of out in the community. So that's something, that's what I love is just how close it is to the lake and to waterfalls and to hiking trails and all sorts of things that students will use as part of their education. One of the coolest things at River Falls is um, there's a sundial in one of our academic buildings. It's the largest and most accurate vertical sundial in North America. Um, it's kind of like one of the center points of campus. And so um, it's really exciting just to see students all hover around it, try and figure out how to read it, try and figure out what each of the, stu the stuff means um, as you're looking at directions of the sun and stuff, things like that. I would say the energy on campus in general, whether it was the awakening in the spring, miss having students here for that, or homecoming and fall events and athletics and fine arts in the fall, just the energy uh, that the students bring to campus is what we miss. Yeah, I would echo that as well. Um, I went to NDSU, graduated in 2017, and I think it's just a cool environment with a lot of school spirit or bison pride as we call it. And uh, just kind of, you know, might be in line with what you're imagining your college experience to be like in that regard. Thank you all. You made me miss campus too, with your stories and anecdotes. Um, okay, so I'd like everyone to answer this question. Please provide a, an overview of your admissions timeline, process, important dates. Um, are there minimums? What should students know who are planning to apply to your institution? And please comment on your testing policy for this upcoming year. Um, I can go from Minneapolis Community and Technical College. Um, it's as simple as one, two, three. We have an online application. It takes about 12 minutes to complete. There's a $20 application fee. And then secondly, for testing, because we no longer have the Accuplacer testing, um, we are accepting the high school grade point average and standardized test scores for high school students as a way for us to do placement. Um, once placement is done, then you can meet with an academic advisor that's a specialist in your area, and they'll help you virtually register for classes. At uh, Northern, we have what's called rolling admission. So that means that as we get um, completed applications, we review them and make decisions. So there is no admission deadline. You can apply at any time. Um, Students will submit our NMU application, which takes maybe five minutes to finish. There's a $35 application fee. We do accept fee waivers from counselors. Um, and then we want your official high school transcripts. So that comes um, directly from your school, either through a sec secure electronic delivery service or by mail. Um, NMU is test blind for fall of 21. So for students who are applying for this fall, um, what that means is even if you submit your test scores, we're not going to look at them when we make an admission decision. However, they can be helpful for scholarship consideration. So for students who have taken a test, um, I'd encourage them to submit that so we can look at that for scholarships. 
And then students will get their admission decision at most four weeks later, but oftentimes it's a lot quicker than that. It just depends on how busy. So there are some throughout the, all, I think all counselors will say there are some parts of the year that are a lot busier than others, um, but it, it's oftentimes a lot quicker than four weeks. We're very similar to Northern Michigan in having the rolling admission cycle. So again, whenever you apply, you'll receive a decision with, from us within two to three weeks. Again, just depending on what time of year you apply. The earlier, the better. Uh, our application for fall of 2021 will open mid to late August. We are still ironing out the exact date. Last week, it was announced by the North Dakota University System that all of its member institutions would be test optional for admission um, for the upcoming cycle. Um, so again, it's something we are currently working on, just trying to figure out what exactly our application will look like and what supplemental information we will need. Um, but probably the biggest highlight that I like to mention is that we have no application fee at NDSU. So it's free to apply um, and generally a pretty quick process for students. At Gustavus, we're non-binding uh, in terms of admission and there is no fee for applying. Uh, so no matter when you apply, you're not locked in. You have as much time as you need to make a decision. We're also test optional and have been for almost 15 years now. So we look at everything about you. It's inclusive, holistic admission. Uh, we really want to see who you are as a person as we make a decision about admission. Um, we encourage you to think about the August 1st application opening and also October 1st as the first time as a senior that you can do the FAFSA. But then you still have all the way until May 1st to take plenty of time and make the best decision for you. So our fall 2021 application opens up August 15th. Um, we will be doing rolling admissions as well too. Um, as far as testing, testing goes or testing requirements, we moved to test optional last year. So just a continuation on that process. Um, as far as the fall 2021 application fee, it'll be $25. Um, as far as admissions decision, we don't require official transcripts. Um, so if you do happen to have a copy of that on hand, we can make decisions on those. But as far as if you want to actually commit and register with us, we will need the official copy. So um, as far as making admissions decisions, we do not need the official transcript. Um, so just kind of echoing uh, what Alan had said, um, as far as looking at you as a whole, it's a holistic review. So not only looking at your grades, but we look at you know a writing sample and kind of the different things that you've been involved in uh, outside of the classroom as well too. So um, as you filled out the application, anything and everything about yourself, we highly encourage you to let us know because we use all of that information to make our decisions. So River Falls also has a rolling admissions process. There's no specific deadline. Um, we are tech and we test optional, um, UW systems test optional for fall of 21. Um, that also goes for our scholarships as well. So we will not require standardized test scores for our guaranteed scholarships. Um, we will, there are, uh, is a couple um, foundation scholarships that may require a test score. They're still ironing out those details. We're getting a brand new application this year. So that will go live on August 1st. It will be significantly shorter for students. So we're all very excited about that. Uh, it should only take about 10 to 15 minutes to fill out uh, that application. Once we get that, um, we'll also need your high school transcript. We will take that from you. So if you have a copy, we don't need an official one from your high school. Then it takes about seven to 10 days for us to get an admission decision back to you. So it's a pretty quick turnaround process. Okay, a few of you mentioned scholarships um, when you were talking about your admissions overview. Um, so my next question is, how does a student go about financial aid and scholarships at your school? And if one person could uh, mention FAFSA, what it is, how to apply, and then if um, whoever wants to comment on your scholarship application review process and um, so forth. Do you want us to all comment on this or is that what you said? I guess a few people did in your um, your admissions portion. Sure. Sure. If you sure. wanted to add anything extra about how to apply for additional scholarships, or if there's anything special like a deadline student should know about um, mm -hmm. collective scholarships, maybe just add on. Sure, at Gustavus, you apply simultaneously to the uh, application for admission, so you can be doing both things online. Uh, you're automatically considered for academic scholarships. Fine arts scholarships are available um, with an application 
and an audition or a portfolio, et cetera. The instructions are all on our website. That'll be open again starting on August 1st along with the application. And then we encourage that FAFSA on October 1st that I think everyone would agree, the sooner you do, the better to be assessed for eligibility for aid not based upon merit or talent. So do both of those things during the process and you'll be in good shape. Uh, so at Northern, it's um, it's a little bit similar. I'll mention too, so the FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid, which is where students will go and submit their information to open up opportunities for grants, so free money, um, things like that from the federal government, as well as loan opportunities that are going to have maybe a better interest rate than they might find through private lenders. Um, so the FAFSA can also open up at Northern opportunities for other need-based scholarships that are on campus too. So once we see that FAFSA, then we can see that you're eligible for other opportunities that have the criteria of you need to be a need-based student. Um, at Northern, uh, it's very similar. You are automatically considered for some of our scholarships when you apply. So we have an award that brings, called the National Academic Award, that brings the cost to study at Northern very close to in-state tuition rates. And then there are some additional achievement scholarship, scholarships that range from $1,000 to $5,000 ships that they're also automatically considered for. In addition to that, we have a presidential scholarship competition that students will apply for. You have to be admitted in order to do that. So that's why we encourage students to apply earlier. So kind of along with that FAFSA, when it becomes available in October 1, we like to have students submit their applications by then too so they can submit an app. Uh, for the Presidential Scholars Competition, which ranges from $1,000 a year to a full ride, um, 10 full ride scholarships per year. Um, and on, on top of that, we also have some other scholarship opportunities that students can apply for but have to be admitted for. So for example, our donor funded scholarship opportunity. So it's always good to start looking for scholarship opportunities earlier rather than later. Uh, which is why it's good to apply to your schools earlier and get an admission decision because like Northern, some schools will require that you're admitted first um, before you can apply for them. At Minneapolis College, um, we have on our cost and aid page information about different um, scholarships. Um, one other opportunity that we offer, it's called the Power of You. And it is essentially two years of free college, um, and it requires um, that you're a, a graduating senior from um, Minnesota, and that your family possesses a modest income. So that's where you do need to do the financial aid to determine if you're eligible. Um, but that's one opportunity that not many students are aware of. It's offered in, at three schools, so us, Century, and St. Paul. Um, with Century and St. Paul, they have specific requirements on um, what schools you're graduating from, but for us, it's anyone that's eligible. So um, I recommend to go all, to all of our colleges and universities and check out the scholarship page, because there's always um, extra resources outside of the campus resources that are um, helpful. And think of it like this, any, if you already have to write an essay, spend some time writing an essay and um, potentially that essay could get you some money. So just anything to shrink down the tuition is going to help. Uh, at the Crookston campus, uh, as far as scholarships that we offer, we have achievement scholarships. So these would be similar to what um, you may be familiar with, with uh, merit-based scholarships. Um, these achievement scholarships are, you don't have to apply for them. Um, really, to be eligible for these, we're looking at your core GPA. So this would be the GPA that's calculated with, you know, your math, science, English, and social sciences. Um, so currently for the fall, fall 2020 uh, class, we're looking at a 2.75 core GPA. If uh, there's, there's discussions now looking about changing what that requirement is, but currently how we're looking at it is that 2.75. So Again, going back to the application with providing us with all um, information about yourself, we, we also use that information too to determine um, the amount of scholarships that we award to you if you are eligible for them. Uh, then we also do offer specialty scholarships. These are going to be donor funded scholarships that you would need to actually apply for. And you would apply to the ones that you feel like you fit the requirements for. Um, the application for this opens up 
typically the first of October. So that would be something that once uh, College Knowledge Month starts up is something that um, if you're looking at us, um, we encourage you to also apply for those. Um, and one thing I like to also mention to students too, you have Google. So, you know, if you're looking for other scholarship opportunities, there's no excuse for you. I wish it was something that was ready available around our time, but um, you'd be surprised with the, what else is out, uh, out there outside of what we as institutions have to offer you as well too. So definitely utilize your resources. Yeah, I would add to that, or maybe just kind of reiterate, the pool is always smaller than you think it's going to be. There's probably fewer people applying to scholarships than you would ever imagine. Um, people used to tell me that when I was a college student and I never believed them. And now that I'm on the other side of it, I tell students that all the time. And I don't know if they believe me, but I would definitely throw that out there. Um, one other quick opportunity that I would want to highlight for NDSU. Like I said, I'm covering for my colleague Heather today and she oversees our cultural diversity tuition waiver. At NDSU, that is a four-year full tuition scholarship. There is a limited number of them though, so it is a competitive award. So it's really just important that you hit the deadlines basically so that you can apply and be considered for that award. Basically, that entails applying for admission, being admitted, submitting the FAFSA, and then submitting the uh, cultural diversity tuition waiver application by February 1st, I believe. Okay, thank you for that. Um, we just have a couple minutes left, so I have one more question in closing. Um, maybe one or two people could comment on this one. So what single piece of advice would you give to a student entering their senior year of high school beginning to consider their post-secondary options? What would you yeah. do yourself? <laughs> uh, I'll throw out one thing. Um, wherever you apply, call that school and make certain that what you think they've received in terms of your materials have actually been received. I would say, um, you know, generally speaking, I always encourage students to visit campus, e even just any, any college campus, because it's helpful for you to get a sense of what you like, what you don't like, and what you need in your school. It's really helpful to get some concrete examples and to get a feeling from visiting campus. But what I'd also say is we know this year has been weird and we know that this upcoming year is gonna be weird too. So if you have questions or if you're worried, let us know because I think we're all um, trying, we want you to be as successful as possible and we wanna take everything into consideration. So if you feel like there's something we need to know, reach out to your admissions counselor in your school and loop us in, let us know what's going on um, because we know that things really kind of got out of whack this year with the pandemic. I would say as far as figuring out, you know, going into your senior year, where, where to start with the process of colleges, figure out what you like to do. And once you figure out what, what that thing is, start doing the research to see what schools offer an opportunity for you to actually study that that's really gonna open the door for you to decide on where to schedule a visit, who to start contacting to see what your school offers them and what kind of things that you can get into. So I would say for those who kind of have an idea of what they want to study, but not entirely sure, see what's out there. And then that's gonna really start the process rolling for you to, to start considering what schools to talk to, which counselors you need to get in contact and figure out what is the next step to get started to actually make that a reality. Thank you. Oh, go ahead, Cheryl. Oh, I was just going to add to what Musa said is that, um, and don't let the not knowing what it is you want to do with your life stop you from even going to school. Just go. And generals are required for most programs anyway. And we have all of us have really robust aids to help you d get pointed in the right direction. So even if you're undecided by your last week of school, your senior year, don't let that stop you from going. Well, I would just add in there too, just enjoy the search. I mean, it's a really fun time for a lot of students to have so many options and be able to look at so many schools. And um, every time I'm standing around a college fair, I always look around and see how many different options there are for students. So um, really enjoy being able to look and sort through your options and figure out what's out there. Um, and look at new places that you might not have looked at before. Excellent, thank you all. So I am gonna bring us to a close here today.
Um, so I just wanted to provide again this contact information and more importantly, thank you to the viewers who, turned it, who tuned in live today or those who might be viewing this recording in the future um, and the panelists who joined us to share their expertise. We hope you found this information helpful as you take steps forward in your college search. Um, so listed here, maybe this is a good time to take a quick, quick screenshot um, is the contact information for the people you heard from today. Um, we look forward to working with you in the future and thank you again.